it was a heck of an undertaking. I mean, to get uh, a scientific team plus um, a whole bunch of camera crews and all of their equipment into the middle of nowhere. I mean, we were pretty much as far away as you can get from civilization in, in New Guinea. Um, was itself an incredible undertaking. I mean, our, our first camp that we set up was um, in the, the foothills of a volcano called Mount Basavi. And as the expedition progressed, we got higher and higher and eventually dropped into this uh, extinct volcanic crater in the search of new species of animals. And the, the results were, were pretty spectacular, actually. So there were around 40 new species you discovered. Tell us about some of them. Well, 40 is a, is a very conservative estimate. That's, that's what we can say now so far we have definitely got. Um, but it, as, as the time goes on and more and more are catalogued, that number will increase. Um, perhaps the, the, the biggest triumph, I guess, is, is 16 new species of frogs, which, um, believe me, is, is just an incredible finding and really shows quite how rich in, in uh, amphibian life the area we were in is. Um, we've also got um, two species of mammals, at least two species of mammals, one of which is a bat, the other of which is, is just insanely spectacular. It, it's a giant woolly rat, which is about the size of a cat, uh, quite a good-sized cat, actually, a cat that's been feeding very well. Um, and we found this inside the crater uh, at night, just wandering around, totally unafraid of, of people. Obviously, had never encountered people before and was quite happy just eating, munching on tubers in front of us as, as we studied this, this magnificent creature, never before seen by science. Um, and sometimes when it was in the crater, it almost seemed like every single animal we came across was, was a new species and was something that had never been catalogued before. So um, the, the, the serious taxonomists and scientists on the team were, were just in Never Never Land. You know, they were, they were bouncing off the walls. It was, it, it was really quite something. And, and for me, as, as someone who's more of a, an expedition leader and an all-round naturalist, um, to be in a place that is as special as that, as dramatic as the volcano was, and be finding new things around every corner was was really quite quite something. It, it's very much a sealed ecosystem. I mean, it would be wrong to say humankind has never been in there. The the land itself is owned by uh, local New Guinean tribes, um, and they have gone in there on occasion in the past, but but not often. I mean, even, even they hadn't gone through the crater very very much because the the terrain is so unforgiving, so hard to travel through. The the um, the, the crater walls are, are near vertical and you know covered in covered in vegetation so it's a very difficult place for them to penetrate um, and because of that it's it's not been hunted the animals in there um, are, are totally unafraid of people um, and it, it did just feel like an entering this I mean, almost like an island you know an, an island surrounded by sea that that uh, allows new species to, to, to generate at an increased rate uh, and inside the volcano surrounded by these precipitous crater walls uh, was very much the same kind of environment so in this island, or, or va vacuum almost, um, the occupants, have they kind of stepped outside of the world's genetic pool? But very much so. I mean, one of the, uh, the, the new creatures that we found um, was only ranked as a new subspecies, which means that genetically it's not different enough from... Uh, it, this was a, a silky cuscus, a rather bizarre-looking marsupial, well, very bizarre-looking nocturnal marsupial that we found. Um, and, and you would say that from its ge geographical isolation from the silky cuscus outside of the crater, that it's well on its way to evolving into a new species and will do some, sometime in the near future um, because it has that barrier, it has that way of, of just not being able to, to interbreed with populations outside of the crater. So yeah, it has created this, this kind of micro-ecosystem where everything inside is shut off from the outside and so uh, evolves down their own tracks at a kind of exponential rate. Finally then, Steve, why do we... Well, why do you think we get so excited when new species are discovered? What can we learn from them? I think, for me, it, it really does my heart good to know that there's stuff out there still to be discovered. It, it's, it's exciting to think that our planet hasn't been you know, completely destroyed by man, it hasn't been run roughshod over, and that there are still dark corners where there are wonders that people have never heard of. I think people are intrinsically excited by that. I really hope they are because, I mean, all of us just came back, you know, filled with absolute glee. And I really hope that the, uh, the people who watch the series, you know, have, have the same excitement. For more great downloads, go to guardian.co.uk forward slash audio.